And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hi-ho, hi-ho! It's off to work we go! And it's not for gold or jewels, ladies and gentlemen. But today we are mining salt. Come again, salt. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are mining salt. Fantastic! Okay, well normally that make me run. Woo, yay, fun theme, let's play something else. But actually, this is not a bad Euro style type game in which you're sending, it's a worker placement game, but it's different than other worker placement games that I've played in the sense that you actually need to use your workers in a chain to get down in the mines and get things out. Now, I've seen that in games too before, but it works very well here. The theme is actually very strong in this game, and it's a lot of fun. Let's take a look and see if you're interested in getting you some more salt. Alright, there's two main sections of how this game is played. We have the board here, which is the town, and then we have over here, we have the mine. And you can see the mine has three different levels in it. They start like this. As players will be going through the mine, they're going to discover different sorts of salt that's in each section of the mine. And you can see here, for example, that in those two levels, in these two spaces, there's two brown and one green salt, and there's one water cube there. But as we get lower, you'll see that there's more water, but the salt starts getting better because white is the best. It's white, green, and brown. And then when we go all the way down to the third level, the salt gets much better. But there's always going to be water involved. Now, players are going to start with a handful of meeples or workers. They're going to get five of them. Uh, however, they can get more of them as the game progresses. And uh, there's three major rounds of the game. In each round, players are going to continue, and they all get one action, and then after that they get two actions each. And they can use these little guys in different actions. So here's some of the things they can do. One, they can place the guy in the mine. It doesn't matter where you place him, as long as he's connected to other meeples that are already in the mine. So, I could, if I was the white player, I could put one here, because he can get out of the mine thanks to the, the black workers who are here. And then if there was an orange worker here, he again can go, and you're allowed to put multiple in the same spot. Now, so putting a, a worker out, and that's how you discover new areas as you go throughout the mine. Another action you can take in the mine is extracting the salt from it. When we find a new spot in the mine, we will put the salt there, as well as the water cubes that are there. If I want to take an action and take this salt out of this spot here, let's take a little bit closer there at this specific area. Let's say the orange wanted to extract the salt here. Well, there's one water cube there. So that means to extract one salt, they're going to need one extra guy. But they have two guys there, so that's fine. One guy there to take care of the water, another guy to extract the salt. I'll probably take the green salt. And I have to have guys all the way up to the surface. Now the problem with that is, because they are other colors, for each guy that I pass, I have to pay a cent or a coin as I go up. Now, if, let's say the orange guy here, I wouldn't have to pay this guy anything. I would just have to pay the white one, and I'd have to pay black one. So you have to be careful, and if possible, you know, have a line of your own. Also, when you do that, you put both of your workers that you've used face down. They're tired. They can't be used again. Unless you use both of your actions, you may put them back up so that you can use them again in the future, moving them around. When they're tired, they can't be moved. Other than that, though, you are allowed to move a guy as long as he doesn't break a chain. See, orange can move this guy out. White cannot move him now, though, because it would break the chain. So that's one of the things, a couple of the things that you can do on your turn. Everything else is done over here at the board. One of the things you can do is you can place one of your workers as an assistant at the different buildings around the board. If you place your worker as an assistant, let's say I place my worker down here at the water pump, as an assistant, anytime someone else uses this action here, I will get one cent for them using the action, which is pretty handy. Other actions that players can take are they can come here to this to well the water pump. You can come here and you can pay zero, two, five, or nine to pump take water cubes out of the mine, which will help you get salt out easier. You can hire more workers here, although each time someone hires a worker, the price goes up. Over here is the market. You can buy or sell. Some, you can see there's some salt cubes there. 
but as players go through they can just sell or buy uh, the cubes for whatever prices are available at that point in time anybody can always go and play and gamble apparently everyone in this game is incredibly lucky so you can always take an action and take one coin and then you can come up here and buy tools these are basically special abilities like this one here lets me move salt cubes without paying two different people this one here lets me bring two guys back who are tired and this one over here I can sell or buy cubes for a for one more coin or buy them for one less so there's different tools that are useful as the game progresses but the biggest part of the game is over here where I, the, here's the orders that are being made for salt for example here the king wants two brown cubes of salt and he'll pay nine for it here he wants three brown and fifteen and this is round one so you can see he wants brown and green but in later rounds he's going to want ones that you know use the better salts and that give considerably more amounts of money when I want to go salt I'll send a worker up here the next turn he moves here and then next turn I'll buy it so there's a two turn delay so you need to put them in there and then make sure by the time that he moves up there that you have the salt cubes that you want. It's an interesting mechanic. There are some tools that allow you to skip people. And there's a little bit of, you know, in your face in the sense that you could buy a contract before someone else and get the, get the bigger and better money amounts. Once a certain amount of contracts has been bought in each round, then that round ends. We take all the stuff off the board, basically, and start over uh, with the level 2 and then the level 3 stuff. Then at the end of the game, everyone counts all their cubes. Each cube that you haven't sold is worth three cents. And then we just add all the money together, and whoever has the most money is the winner. You know, there's a lot of times where, like I said at the beginning, where these themes kind of annoy me. And when you look at the board, and I look, and wow, this is another castle, another place put workers. But, but I like these games when it's a, a, a good game or a great game. This is not really a great game, but it's a good game. And where the theme works. So while this isn't one that I'll be dying to play, if someone says, hey, let's play Magnus, I'll say, hey, you know what, why not? Because there's some real interesting ways to mess with the other players, to get your miners in the chains, or to force people to use your miners to bring stuff above board, to, uh, to take residence in one of the places and make people pay you every time they go there. There's a lot of interesting back and forths, and uh, man, I'm just not very good at this game at all, but I, I felt like there's a lot of decent strategies. The last turn can kind of grind out as you try to figure out your best bet to get points, like many of these games do. But overall, I was pleased with this game, not like, woo, but where I said, hey, let's try it again. Magnum Soul. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. 